Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is The Governor's House. Beloved family, our text says, Food is for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glory God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. 1 Corinthians 6, 13-20 When the army comes to take over a territory, they usually attack the seat of power or where the head of the country or government resides. In the Bahamas, that would be the governor's house or the office of the prime minister. In England, that would be the Queen's Palace. And in the United States, that would be the White House occupied by the president or the seat of power sits in the governor's house for each state in the union. Well, the kingdom of God returned to earth to take over the territory. King Jesus came to make way for the Holy Spirit, who is the governor, to return to reclaim the governor's house. And that house is you and me. Yes, this is why Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot see, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you do, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. John fourteen fifteen to 18. King Jesus tells us plainly that when he leaves, he will not leave us as orphans, but will send us his spirit to help us receive the purpose that God has for us. The Holy Spirit, his governor, returns to help us in our ambassadorship. He helps us by renewing our minds so that we can represent the kingdom of God as an ambassador of Christ the King or authority that he represents Who is God? When a king sends an ambassador, all the power of the king is carried with the ambassador. When the ambassador speaks, he speaks on behalf of the country that sent him, not on his own accord. You and I are ambassadors of Christ. But before we can go to the embassies around the world, we have to prepare our own house. We have to fortify our own house, our own bodies. And how do we fortify our house? Oh, I am so glad you ask. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand still. Now listen, family, stand therefore, having girding yourself with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, 
taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Ephesians 6, 10-19 Oh, thank you, Father, for this seed today. Paul says, I put on the full armor on this body made of clay, for I am an ambassador in chains. Ah, glory be to God. And he doubles down in Corinthians. He says, we are therefore Christ ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. 2 Corinthians 5.20 We are the body of Christ. But our bodies are to be holy and separated to God, our Father. As our text says, we have been purchased for a price. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And there it is, family. The governor has returned to inhabit his house. He left Adam in the garden because he could not dwell in an unholy temple. But now, the King of Kings, King Jesus Christ, has made our house holy again. We who believe in him, we have been made righteous by him who knew no sin. Joseph was one of 12 sons who had a dream that would take him from his father's house to the house of the king. Yes, he was made governor of all Egypt and moved to take over the governor's house which made room for him to save his entire family, including the ones who wanted to kill him. Aha! King Jesus returned as the king and gave his life as king to save those who wanted to kill him. Then he sent his governor to take over our house of flesh, to fill it with his spirit and make us a house of righteousness again. The promise of God was to deliver the governor, the Holy Spirit, back to earth and man. In order for the governor to stage a takeover of the territory, he has to take over the residence that is a den of thieves that needs to be turned back to a house of God. Beloved brothers and sisters, King Jesus Christ sent back his Holy Spirit, the governor, to return to take over his house, which is you and me. Much better.